All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. I appreciate all my subscribers who click on my videos and watch them. That's always a huge help. Uh, if you found this video in a search, if you're a new person or just popped up in your feed, hey, click that subscribe button. I'm trying to grow this. H and R, Harriet and Richardson, seven thirty-two. Let me clean this up a little bit. I'm going to try to dispel a notion that's pretty popular on these things. Am I right in doing so? I don't know. A lot of people see these H&Rs. When they were new, they were pretty cheap. And even nowadays, you can get them pretty cheap sometimes. They think, oh my gosh, cheap revolver, Saturday night special. You know, they think it's like a Rome or a, a Raven or a Jennings or something like that. You know, ultra cheap that's not the case with this, folks. In my in my personal experience, in my opinion, I've had several of these over the years, and I've kept this one because this is one of the, the nicer condition ones I've had. These things are decent quality. Now they were they were cheap when they were new. They used cheap manufacturing techniques on it. You know, cheaper, more cost effective manufacturing techniques. I guess is a better way to describe it. We've got a steel, a mill, a mill, milled steel frame. You know, you got a full steel barrel. I mean, this is uh, this is a nice little this is a nice little piece. Now, I don't know for sure the exact dates. Harriet Richardson went out of business. I believe it was in '86. I'm going to guess this is probably an early early '80s one. Let's zoom in here a little bit closer. I don't know a whole lot about them. I'm guessing it's probably that later because it just say H and R Corporation Gardner Mass USA. The older ones didn't say Mass or USA. It just said Gardner because everyone knew that part of the country is where most a lot of a lot of weapons were being made up there. Now, it's not uh Smith and Wesson quality, but I'm telling you guys, this is this these are these are nice little good shooting little revolvers. Someone that had this before me, of course, they let a little bit of uh, corrosion. I need to try to clean that up at some time, I guess. You know, of course, first thing I always do when I get a new weapon is I try to Keep it oiled, keep some balanced stars, some rim oil on it to try to keep that corrosion from growing. And let's, you notice that there is no cylinder latch? Nope. It opens by pulling out and the cylinder flips open. And look at that, six rounds. Now it's only six rounds of 32 Smith & Wesson long. Uh, what caliber is that? Most people ask nowadays. Well, it's an old caliber that was very popular once upon a time. Not so much anymore. But um, I got a little bit of uh, pitting right there. I need to try to clean that up too, don't I? You can tell this one wasn't shot very much. Like a lot of these guns, probably a grandma's gun or something like that. Maybe a purse gun for some lady. But they're, I mean, I'm... They're nice little guns. Now, I've got medium-ish hands. Sometimes I wear a large and glove size. This grip is small. This is a small revolver. A lot of people don't, don't realize how small these things are. It is a small little revolver. So if you've got a mom or a wife or a sister or a daughter with small hands, one of these in 32 Smith & Wesson long shooting, uh, I personally usually keep this one loaded with little wad cutters. Uh, that's nothing to sneeze at, folks. You've got a, a center fire, a center fire round. Uh, gosh, I can't remember the green, the weight count on it. It's bigger than the twenty-two for sure. But that's 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 nothing that's needed, especially having six rounds on tap. It's a nice, it's a hefty little gun. Let's uh, let's see what it weighs. I, you know, I actually have never weighed this. Let me see here. And my wife has all my tear weights somewhere. Oh, here's one right here. Five hundred gram. This should be seventeen point six ounces. Okay, I used to sell a lot of pool cues online, and let me tell you what, guys, you get some nuts out there with a the pool cue, they think a tenth of an ounce is going to make a difference. You have to make sure of your weight. That's why I like those little terror weights. But this is unloaded, as you saw, 19.5 ounces. By comparison, let's look at a Ruger LCR X and 22 Magnum. This one is also unloaded. It's going to be a little lighter, 15.5 ounces. A lot of people like an all steel weapon though. Let's look at the size. Now it's hard to tell here, but that H&R, 
gosh, I can't get the angles right. This is tough to do without banging everything up. Is a smaller weapon. Maybe the overall length from front to back is maybe a quarter inch longer than the LCRX, but uh, yeah. So, again, just pretty much kind of a show and tell and me rambling on about these things. Uh, they've always done me right. Oh, let's take a look at that sight picture. Not bad. You know, not bad for social work, as the late, great Jeff Quinn would put it. The disadvantage, of course, uh, the ammo. You know, I think I had to order that full metal jack. I mean, that that uh, wad cutter ammo for this because, I, of course, I couldn't find anything local in a post-pandemic world as far as, you know, specialty ammo like that. Yeah, I need to clean up that hammer a little bit. Let me know what you guys think. If you have one of these, tell me some of your history with it. You know, how, how do you like them and stuff like that? You know, I like to keep this personally. This is one of my magnet guns is what I call them. Uh, it's small enough and light enough. I can keep it hidden in inconspicuous places on those little magnets they sell. You know, those little vinyl coated gun magnets so they don't scratch up the frame. Those things are pretty handy. So this is a nice one to keep uh, tucked away just in case. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Drop a comment in there, even if you're just saying hi. Y'all be safe out there.